So there's lots to look forward to, Ash, uh, this year for lymphoma. And I think the main subtype that's going to cause a lot of interest is diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So the, the main abstracts that I'm looking forward to, um, I guess the first one is Polarix. So randomized trial of RCHOP plus RCHUP plus polatizumab um, in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And the reason this is so exciting is there has been a press release suggesting that the primary endpoint is positive. So, you know, we've seen lots of RCHOP versus RCHOP-X studies. Most of them are negative. So to have a positive study will be very exciting and interesting. And it could mean that we're, um, you know, challenging RCHOP for its supremacy. It has reigned supreme as a frontline diffuse large B regimen for 20 years or so. Uh, so that'd be really interesting, but you know, we need to see what's the overall survival data, what's the magnitude of the primary endpoint benefits, et cetera. So it's not a foregone conclusion that it's the end of our chop, but it's an interesting one. Um, then of course, CAR T, you know, there's going to be some really interesting CAR T trials this year, Zuma seven, looking forward to seeing that's looking at CAR T versus autografting in first relapsed a few large B high risk patients though. I think they had to relapse within 12 months to be eligible. Um, so yeah, th that again, potentially could, um, reduce the use of autologous transplantation, because again, we've heard that the primary endpoint is positive, but how positive, um, uh, you know, what, what do the survival curves look like, et cetera. So uh, again, fascinating, uh, data that awaits us there. Um, then I think we await for more data on bispecifics. You know, bispecific antibodies are very interesting, very active in all sorts of lymphoma, not just a few stage B. Um, they're a little bit behind CAR Ts in terms of their development. Um, so, you know, any new data that we've got on durability of remissions, particularly, that's really what we need to, to see um, with bispecifics will be of interest. And then I think more sort of real world data, the one that I'm most looking forward to seeing is um, CNS prophylaxis. So this is a hotly debated you know, topic. Um, again, diffuse large B, high risk patients does intrathecal and or intravenous methotrexate reduce CNS relapse risk. And we know that there is a very big international um, retrospective data set being reported Biggest, I think, we'll, we'll have seen, uh, specifically looking at high CNS IPI patients. And again, the sort of word on the street and that what the abstract says is there's no difference, uh, which could be hugely impactful in terms of clinical practice. But again, you know, with retrospective data, there are always caveats. Um, and it'll be interesting to hear the presentations, see how well balanced the groups are, et cetera. Um, so I think, you know, I'm not certainly ready yet to change practice, but who knows, maybe I will be after, uh, after Ash. So I think those are my top tips. I, I guess another one just to also mention is the plenary session. So, you know, we actually have a primary CNS lymphoma presentation in the primary se plenary session, which is not um, a common occurrence, not what I expected, but I think very exciting. So it's looking at cell-free DNA potentially as a diagnostic and prognostic marker in primary CNS lymphoma. And that you know, has huge impact because it can be very difficult to biopsy these patients. So if we can diagnose it on a lumbar puncture, fantastic. Um, and then you know, to get some early prognostic data of how well these patients are likely to do with what is usually quite an intensive chemotherapy program would be highly valuable. So yeah, looking forward to the plenary session as well.